How and why Germany got rid of its black population. Afro-Germans are people of African descent who live in Germany or who have German citizenship. The number of Afro-Germans, or people of African descent, who are living in Germany and have German citizenship is difficult to determine with precision, however, estimates suggest that there are between 1 and 1.5 million people of African descent living in Germany today, which represents around 1 to 2 percent of the country's total population. The Afro-German community is diverse and heterogeneous, with individuals coming from a variety of African countries, as well as from other parts of the world. Many Afro-Germans are second- or third-generation immigrants, whose families came to Germany as part of post-war labor migration or as refugees. Despite their relatively small numbers, Afro-Germans have made significant contributions to German society and culture, particularly in the areas of music, art, literature, and activism. Despite the fact that there are more than a million Afro-Germans today, Germany tried to eradicate the black population in the past, which is our bone of contention today. Most of you might probably be asking how black people ended up in Germany in the first place. Well, let's go back to memory lane. History and Evolution of Afro-German The origin of Afro-Germans can be traced back to several different periods in history. One of the earliest known instances of people of African descent living in what is now Germany dates back to the Roman Empire, when soldiers and traders from Africa and other parts of the world came to the region. The Afro-German community has a complex history that dates back several centuries and is the result of a variety of factors, including colonialism, slavery, migration, and more recent immigration. During the 1720s, Ghana-born Anton Wilhelm Amo was sponsored by a German duke to become the first African to attend a European university. After completing his studies, he taught and wrote in philosophy. Later, Africans were brought as slaves from the western coast of Africa, where several German estates were established, primarily on the Gold Coast. After King Friedrich Wilhelm I of Prussia sold his Ghana Gross Friedrichsburg estates in Africa in 1717, from which up to 30,000 people had been sold to the Dutch East India Company, the new owners were bound by contract to send 12 Negro boys, six of them decorated with golden chains, to the king. The enslaved children were brought to Potsdam and Berlin. The first significant wave of Afro-German immigration occurred in the mid and late 19th century when Germany established colonies in Africa and brought people from those colonies to work in Germany. Though it is difficult to determine the exact number of black people that lived in Germany in the mid 19th century, it is estimated that about 2,000 black people were living in Germany. One of the largest black communities in Germany in the 19th century was in Berlin, which had a sizable community of African students and scholars who came to the city to study or to work. Many of these individuals lived in the district of Mobit, which was known for its affordable housing and proximity to universities and cultural institutions. Another significant black community in Germany during this time was in the port city of Hamburg, which had a long history of trade with Africa and other parts of the world. Many black sailors and merchants lived in Hamburg's St. Pauli district, which was known for its bustling nightlife and cosmopolitan atmosphere. Many of these individuals faced discrimination and marginalization in Germany, and their experiences contributed to the development of a distinct Afro-German identity. However, the black population started declining during the Nazi regime because there were plans to reduce the black population because they were rapidly increasing in population and posing as a threat. The Decline of Black Population in Germany The Nazi regime refers to the government of Germany under the leadership of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party, which controlled the country from 1933 to 1945. The Nazi regime was characterized by its totalitarianism, aggressive expansionism, and brutal repression of dissent. After coming to power in 1933, the Nazi regime quickly established a dictatorship, suspending civil liberties, suppressing opposition parties, and implementing a system of terror and propaganda to control the population, especially the black population. The regime also pursued a policy of aggressive expansionism, invading neighboring countries and ultimately leading Germany into World War II. 
The Nazi regime in Germany was deeply racist and sought to promote the idea of Aryan racial superiority. While the regime's primary targets were Jews and other groups deemed to be undesirable, including homosexuals, people with disabilities, and Romani people, the regime also targeted people of African descent. The Nazi regime viewed people of African descent as inferior and undesirable and sought to exclude them from German society. The regime passed laws that prohibited interracial marriage and sexual relations and also sought to sterilize people of African descent in order to prevent them from having children. Additionally, the regime carried out a campaign of violence and intimidation against people of African descent, including those who were living in Germany or who were serving in the Allied forces during World War II. Many black soldiers and civilians were subject to harassment, abuse, and even murder at the hands of Nazi officials and their supporters. Despite the regime's efforts, however, there were still people of African descent who lived in Germany during this time, including Afro-German children who were born to German mothers and African fathers. These individuals faced significant discrimination and marginalization, and many were subjected to forced sterilization or other forms of persecution. The Law of the Restoration of Civil Service Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service was a law passed in Nazi Germany on April 7, 1933. The law provided for the removal of Jews and other non-Aryans from government and civil service positions, including teaching positions in universities and schools. The law was one of the first steps taken by the Nazi regime to implement its policy of racial discrimination and persecution, known as the Aryanization of German society. It was based on the false and discriminatory belief that Jews and other non-Aryans were inherently inferior and posed a threat to the German racial community. The law resulted in the dismissal of thousands of Jewish and other non-Aryan civil servants, including many highly qualified professionals who had served the German government for many years. The dismissals had a devastating impact on the individuals affected, as well as on their families and communities. The law for the restoration of the professional civil service was one of a series of discriminatory laws and policies implemented by the Nazi regime, leading ultimately to the Holocaust and the deaths of millions of people, most of them Jews. The law remains a powerful reminder of the dangers of discrimination and prejudice and serves as a warning against the dangers of allowing such beliefs to take hold in society. The Nuremberg Race Laws The Nuremberg Race Laws were a set of anti-Semitic laws enacted in Nazi Germany in 1935. The laws were passed as part of the regime's efforts to promote the idea of Aryan racial superiority and to create a legal framework for the persecution of Jews and other groups deemed to be inferior or undesirable. The Nuremberg race laws consisted of two main components, the Law for the Protection of German Blood and German Honor and the Reach Citizenship Law. The first law prohibited marriage and sexual relations between Jews and non-Jews and also made it illegal for Jews to display the German flag or national colors. The second law stripped Jews of their German citizenship and made them subjects of the state, with limited rights and protections. The Nuremberg race laws marked a significant escalation in the Nazi regime's persecution of Jews and paved the way for even more extreme measures, including the Holocaust. The laws were used to justify the deportation and murder of millions of Jews and other targeted groups during World War II. Today, the Nuremberg race laws serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of racism, discrimination, and abuse of power. They are widely regarded as a violation of basic human rights, and their legacy continues to be felt by the families and communities of those who were affected by them. Forced Sterilization Forced sterilization was a practice that was carried out in Germany during the Nazi era as part of the regime's eugenics program. The program was aimed at promoting racial purity by sterilizing people who were deemed unfit to have children, including those with physical and mental disabilities, as well as individuals who were considered to be a social or deviant in some way. The forced sterilization program began in 1933, shortly after the Nazis came to power, and continued until the end of World War II. 
The program was carried out under the law for the prevention of hereditarily diseased offspring, which authorized the sterilization of anyone who was judged to be hereditarily diseased. Estimates suggest that as many as 400,000 people in Germany were sterilized against their will during this time. Many of these individuals were subjected to the procedure without their knowledge or consent, and some were even sterilized while they were in concentration camps. The T4 Program The T4 Program, also known as Action 4, was a Nazi program implemented in Germany during World War II with the aim of forcibly sterilizing and euthanizing people with disabilities and other conditions deemed undesirable by the Nazi regime. The program was named after its headquarters at Tiergartenstrasse 4 in Berlin. The T4 program began in 1939 and involved the systematic killing of people with disabilities, including those with mental illness, physical disabilities, and chronic illnesses. The program was initially carried out through the use of gas chambers in six institutions across Germany, but later expanded to include other forms of euthanasia, such as lethal injections and starvation. The T4 program was implemented by a network of doctors, nurses, and administrators who were responsible for selecting and registering patients for euthanasia, as well as carrying out the killings themselves. The program was kept secret from the German public, and families were often told that their loved ones had died of natural causes. The T4 program was eventually halted in 1941, in part due to public opposition and concerns about the program's impact on morale. However, the killings continued in other forms, and an estimated 200,000 people with disabilities and other conditions were ultimately killed as part of the Nazis' euthanasia program. The T4 program is widely regarded as one of the most horrific and abhorrent aspects of the Nazi regime and serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of eugenics and the devaluation of human life. Efforts have been made in Germany and other countries to remember and honor the victims of the T4 program and to ensure that such atrocities are never repeated. Overall, the Nazi regime's treatment of people of African descent is widely regarded as a manifestation of its broader racist and anti-Semitic ideology and serves as a reminder of the dangers of discrimination and bigotry. All these laws and practices greatly reduce the black population in Germany, and to stop the complete eradication of the black race in Germany, Afro-Germans did put up a fight. Fighting for their rights Afro-Germans have a long history of fighting for their rights and advocating for greater equality and inclusion in German society. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, several Afro-Germans were active in political and social movements aimed at challenging racial discrimination and advocating for greater civil rights. For example, during the Weimar Republic era, 1918-1933, Afro-Germans were active in leftist and communist movements, as well as in anti-racist organizations such as the Bund der Schwarzen, League of Black People. In the post-war period, Afro-Germans continued to organize and advocate for their rights. Afro-Germans faced significant discrimination and persecution in Nazi Germany during the 1930s. While there were no organized protests specifically by Afro-Germans during this time, there were individual acts of resistance and defiance. For example, Afro-German boxer Johann Rukeli Trollmann, who was also a member of the Sinti and Roma communities, defiantly refused to change his style of boxing to conform to Nazi ideology. He continued to use his signature Gypsy style in the ring, which involved dancing and dodging his opponents, even though it was considered un-German by the Nazi authorities. Trollmann's refusal to conform ultimately led to his arrest and imprisonment in a concentration camp, where he died in 1944. Another example of resistance came from Afro-German Hans Georgen Massacoy, whose memoir Destined to Witness describes his experiences growing up in Nazi Germany as the son of a Liberian diplomat. Despite facing discrimination and exclusion from German society, Massacoy refused to be defined by the racial prejudices of the time and ultimately went on to become a successful journalist. While there were no organized protests by Afro-Germans during the 1930s, these individual acts of resistance and defiance serve as a reminder of the resilience and strength of those who stood up against the injustices of the Nazi regime.
The struggle for civil rights and equality for Afro-Germans continues today, and their activism and advocacy have contributed to important progress in promoting greater inclusion and equality in German society. In the 20th century, a second wave of Afro-German immigration occurred as a result of post-war labor shortages and increased migration from African countries. Many of these individuals came to Germany as students or professionals, and a significant number also came as refugees or asylum seekers. Today, Afro-Germans make up a small but growing percentage of Germany's population, and the community continues to face issues related to racism, discrimination, and social exclusion. Despite these challenges, Afro-Germans have made significant contributions to German society and culture, particularly in the areas of music, art, literature, and activism. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel for more.